All right, it's uh, 4.05, so I'm gonna get started. Uh, I wanna, first of all, just welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to this second workshop. Uh, today, I am planning to show you how to uh, create an envelope that holds a letter in HTML and CSS and JavaScript, and how to open that letter up. Um, I am first going to, my Zoom is a little messy right now, so let me just clean that up for really quick. Okay. All right. So last week, or two weeks ago, we, we kicked off this Boom of the Week workshop with a series of challenges so that we can give everyone a chance to, uh, who attends, a chance to learn some real HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and really experience the power of those coding languages. Um, and also the power of those languages is so that uh, you can share, easily share your projects uh, using the Goom coding system. Um, so just to kind of give you what we're, our upcoming dates and give you some announcements and then we'll get started. Um, so, we are here on uh, number two. Uh, we're gonna be talking about a challenge at the, towards the end of the session where you guys can practice what you learned. It's, it's a way to do homework basically because without practicing uh, the skills that you're learning in these workshops, you're not gonna really uh, learn them and you're not gonna really have a chance to uh, you know, experience the value of these skills. So I will be going over those challenges at towards the end of the session. Um, here are a bunch of workshop materials you can go to. And if you don't have this page, I'm gonna check the chat, see if EA send it, nope. All right, I'm gonna send you guys a link to this page actually so that you guys will have this. I think it's also on our Discord channel so that you can have it there. Um, and throughout the class, uh, there's a different ways to get to the, uh, the notes and I'm gonna show you those couple ways, but in this page, you can always just go here to the notes and get to the source files of the code so that you can see what the end uh, result is. So just use this as your guide, you know, what we're doing, kind of high level view, um, because we're gonna go into the details and some of you might get lost and this is a way to uh, get unlost. Um, but if you do find yourself uh, getting lost. And if you have any questions, this workshop's supposed to be uh, a, um, a multi-way conversation about coding. So I really encourage you guys to post questions on the chat. And ideally, you know, you can just speak up during the, uh, in the workshop. You feel free to interrupt me um, and we can uh, answer any questions you have. Because if you have any questions, I'm sure other people have the same question. The um, next week, trying to give you a high level view, we're gonna go from going away from doing CSS and SVG and some art level project. And we're gonna go into more of a JavaScript project where we're gonna work on data visualization, which is a very important aspect of machine learning, as well as a uh, higher level view of this is, it's a very cool kill skill set to have if you're trying to communicate to other people uh, using data and you wanna really communicate a message, the impact of that data. And uh, I will be going over that skills, those skills in this class. Then we're gonna jump back over into something more artsy and, uh, and we're gonna pl play with CSS and JavaScript this time to do uh, Instagram like image filters. CSS has a lot of cool functionality that makes it easy to create really fun filters on your on your photographs and javascript allows you to actually take pictures on your uh, websites and send that to people uh, and then our last workshop that we have in this series is to build a chat application so you get a sense to how to use javascript to have conversations with people um, and kind of build your own little private channel to talk to people there's a lot of um, worrying these days about social media and you know sharing your information and if you know how to build your own little chat application you can have your own private 
a conversation with people with no one listening because you built the code. Um, so um, also uh, our last event, we had a couple of uh, challenge winners. So you can explore what they've done. And um, if you wanted to um, catch up from last class, last session, if you weren't able to join, there's a video here you can watch later. And all the files are here and information about the Q&A session that we had last Saturday or a couple of Saturdays ago. So that's the other thing is uh, this Saturday, we have a uh, mentoring session. You can sign up, click in this link. You will have 10 minutes of my time or TA's time and where we can uh, really give you one-to-one -one help in, uh, in trying to understand uh, these languages and trying to help you make an impact with these languages. So please um, sign up. Space is limited, so first come, first serve. Uh, so if you do have any questions from this class that don't get answered, this is a great time to get those questions answered. All right, finishing up with the admin stuff, do you, um, do you guys have any questions before we start with the workshop? All right, that sounds like a quiet no. All right, so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna show you a second way to get to the workshop notes. You can always hit this uh, guide.md, but um, I also wanna show you how to do it through your coding space. So I'm assuming everyone has their coding space um, and that they're logged into their coding space and they are in this view where you can explore your files. Um, I can go and show you how to create this, uh, get to this view if anyone needs me to do that. Otherwise, I'll just jump in. So just send me on the chat if you don't know how to do this. Um, DA sent a link on where you can go to create one. It's really dead easy to create one. Um, you can just go to our homepage. Whoops, I, I typed it wrong, but you can just uh, go to our homepage and I'm logged in. So I'm gonna log out here. Um, but you should see something like this. Hit this nice big button here, get started, it's free. You sign up, you click this create account and it will take you directly to this page on your own on your own coding space. So I have a paid account um, with a custom domain. So that's why you see www.wizardcreator.com here. Um, if you do sign up, you will, you will get a random uh, goom.space account, which is our free account. And um, the rules behind the free account are changing. Uh, so, but we'll, it will be uh, available for you uh, with no expiration date. Uh, however, we're going to be limiting the number of files that you can create on it. So in the future, you might see that if you over, if you reach that limit, you might be getting an error, but uh, you won't see that error right now. All right, getting into, uh, into the notes from here, you would go to this little thing called a hamburger menu. You would click it click Goom of the Week. Um, if you're not seeing Goom of, the, Goom of the Week here, you can go to Settings, and you can uh, click this button to participate. Right now it says Stop, I can click Stop, and then it would go away. So if you create an account, you will see it like this. I can click Participate, and then it will take me to this page where I can just go and submit my uh, challenges sign up for the live Q&A session or sign up for the next workshop. So if the workshop has a blue text to it, you can click on it and it will take you to the notes uh, that I'm gonna go through today. Uh, it's our syllabus really of the workshop. So I'm gonna take a pause here and give you guys a chance to let me know if you're having any issues getting to these notes. All right, another silent no. All right, so today we're gonna to be creating this project. So if I hit play, you click on a button that grows when you hover over it, takes out a letter, 
and then it animates that letter opening out. Um, so it's a cute little project that we feel that you can you can follow along and then use in your everyday life. So if you want to send a birthday message to a friend or to your mom, uh, you can just create this, uh, create a page that has this um, envelope on it and send the link to any of whoever you want. And that person, when they click that link, they will go to your page. Um, all right. So um, if you, uh, um, do you have a lot of questions and you don't want to kind of answer them yourself? I have a list of resources. If you click here, it's at the bottom of the page. And these are all great websites you can go to to learn more about all the various concepts that we're going to be learning today. Um, so I encourage you to uh, follow your curiosities and see the true power behind everything I'm teaching you. So I'm going to teach you uh, a sample. I'm going to give you a taste of what are called SVGs and uh, a sample of CSS and a sample of JavaScript, but it's by, by no means the uh, all encompassing. There's, it's just going to be a very small subset of it. So if you're curious about the true power of it, you should click these links and go there. All right. Okay. So, um, so our strategy to create this thing here is to um, imagine we are building this card like, um, I'm going to hit this, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to show you a picture of the card. Uh, let me, um, let me go back to here. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of go, I'm going to go to the, a, uh, a working copy of this project. So let me just go to index HTML here. All right. So imagine if you were going to create this in real life, you're going to create an envelope that looks just like this. What you would do in real life probably is we get some paper and some scissors and you would get a ruler and you would measure, uh, uh, you would probably draw an outline on a piece of paper, basically measuring the dimensions of the this, this shape. And you would then cut out uh, that piece of paper and then you would glue it together. You glue all the other pieces of paper. So you might want to glue this here. You might have a back of an envelope and then you would put a seal and you would just glue it. And what we're going to be doing is something similar, but with code. And to walk you through that, just to show you the process what I'm talking about here is when I created this project, I actually on a piece of paper, um, actually on my iPad, but it, good enough, um, I drew a coordinate system here where I um, decided I wanted my envelope to be 300 pixels by 300 pixels. So the, this, this width here is 300 pixels, and this height is 300 pixels. And I drew this coordinate system, and I decided, well, this top part I want to leave open for when the envelope opens up. And in the back, the, the true envelope is really this rectangle here. So I'm leaving this white space here so that when the envelope opens up, it has a place to open up into. So if I click this, you can see it opened it up into that place and then it um, then it disappeared. But so this is like one of those pieces of paper that I would cut out. And down here is the front of the envelope. I did the same thing. I measured it. I uh, drew the points of where I wanted to connect my lines to. And this is the critical part in SVG, what we're going to be learning about shortly is these points. You just tell it the points and the browser will know how to draw the lines connecting those points. So you just tell it the points and it will draw the shape for you. And then same thing for these two shapes where when the envelope is open, the, this triangle is going to be open and when it's closed, it's closed. So I kind of drew all that out. So I know exactly what points to use to describe my envelope. Um, and at the end of this, you'll see that 
uh, when we created just our SDGs, which we'll go into shortly, you would have these shapes. And this type of work here is done using HTML. And SDG is just a subset of HTML. And it just allows you to see on the page everything you want on your page. Doesn't look nice, but kind of just shows you in a nice column everything we want. Um, then what we use CSS for in this case is we're going to be gluing these shapes together. So we're going to put all this together using CSS. Because CSS is the language we use to make what we put on our website to make it look nice. This has all the content, all the information, but it doesn't look nice. So after we're done with CSS, uh, we can piece together all the pieces like in a puzzle and make it look like a closed envelope. Then in JavaScript, we are going to write code to, so that we can interact with the envelope. So JavaScript is the language that allows us to interact with our website. So we're going to create a function to call when you click this button so our browser knows to open up the envelope. Um, and so you can see with some JavaScript, we're able to open up that envelope. And then moving forward, we're just going to use CSS animations and SVG animations, which we'll go into, to animate what happens after we open it. So the amount of JavaScript is very, very little. Um, so if I refresh, click that button. So actually, I'll show you all the animations right now we're going to create. The first animation is when you hover over the button, we see that the button changes. So we're going to learn about animating using transitions on hover. When I click that button, opens up. And then, I don't know if you saw, the envelope faded away. So we're going to learn how to make something fade away. And then lastly, we're going to learn how to use keyframes to define animation in stages. So I'll show you what I mean by that. After the envelope disappears, notice how the letter, it grows tall first. It goes up and tall first, and then it gets big. So we have like two stages there. First stage is it goes big, and it goes tall, and the second stage it goes big. So it goes up, and then it goes big. So using something called keyframes, you can define all sorts of stages. You're not limited to two stages. You can have like 100 stages and make a very uh, complicated animation if you wanted to. Um, this, again, this is just to get you guys to see the, um, the power of it, not to teach you everything. All right, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Um, I want to know if you guys have any questions. All right. OK, quite, quite a bunch today. All right, I'll share my screen again. All right. Um, so let's get started. So to get started, um, I'm going to go into my coding space again. I'm just going to type it up. Um, and I'm going to show you how to create a new project. So what I'd like you to do is cr uh, click this new button here, and you can create a folder. Um, we recommend that you create all your files that are associated with a project in a folder so that when you publish them for like when you're doing when you're publishing it for other people to see or you want to push it to a repository or if you want to uh, submit a challenge uh, all you have to do is share the folder with us and we will see all the files inside of it so create new folder I'm going to call this envelope. Okay, I'll call it magic envelope. We get a magic envelope. All right, create. All right, so that created a folder for you. I'm going to click inside of it. And I'm going to create our first new file. And I'm going to call it just index.html. It's kind of like the, page, the main page. You can call it envelope.html. You can call it. Uh, peach.html, you can call it whatever you want. Um, 
I'm calling mine index. All right. And it should bring you right into the coding editor. If your browser did a pop-up blocker, you can always go here and click the link uh, to go to uh, your canvas. So this is kind of like where we're gonna do all our cutting out. This is where we're gonna glue things together. This is where we're gonna, we're gonna build, together, build together this envelope. Um, all right, any questions, guys? Did, you, did everyone get here okay? All right, I wanna hear something from someone. All right, I see a chat. All is good, thank you, thank you so much. All right. Um, all right, I'm getting back to my guide here. All right, so now I'm gonna scroll up to the top of the guide to the, where it says HTML um, creating our shapes. So I'm gonna go up here and we're just gonna start from the top. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that if you guys get lost or if you miss something and you wanna catch up, you can just kind of copy and paste the code uh, that you missed. Um, and then if you have any questions or anything like that, you can always answer, ask them during the class or during the Q and A session. All right, so starting here. So here I, I suggested creating card.html. You could do that too. All right, I'm in my index HTML. And what you see here is um, a very, an empty HTML document. And for those who don't know HTML, this thing called a head here is called a head element. And this is called a body element. And in between these start and end tags, they're called, you can write code. So in here, you would write the well, kind of the instructions to the browser uh, that like commands to the browser to do things that the user uh, don't see, it doesn't see those commands, but the browser can process those commands. And the body is kind of where you put things where the user sees. So for, for now, let's just in the body, just type, hello, just make sure everyone's code is working. And once it's saved, here you can see it's saved, you should see the word hello here. Uh, so we just, you just built your first web page this way. But any questions? Anyone have troubles with that? Okay, I guess we're good. All right. Um, now in the notes, there is this uh, special command so this meta name here. Actually, I'm going to copy this whole thing here uh, from the notes here. So you see my comments. This is really critical um, here because this just tells your browser to say if, if the person's on a mobile device, make scale it to scale a pixel to be a fixed amount across the width of the device. This way the site doesn't look really small and tiny on uh, retina displays. Because uh, cell phones have very, very high resolution. So this kind of controls the resolution for you. And if you want to see what your project looks like while you are coding it, you can click this uh, QR code, which I'm going to do right now. Because I really want to be able to uh, see my card on the mobile phone, because I think it's more fun to send send someone a link on on a um, on like iMessage or something, so they can see their card on their phone. So we want to make sure it looks good on the phone. So I'm just going to scan that QR code. Um, whoops, took a picture of the QR code. All right, all right. Then I have my website there. So if I hit close. Go back into the body element. I type hello. It says once it says saved. I have my browser on my phone. I can hit refresh, and I don't know if you see that, but it says says hello. Okay, so now I can test things on my phone as I code. All right. All right. So very first step is to create an element for each of the shapes we want. So 
Well, the first element we're going to create is a div with, we're going to call it an envelope. This ID just kind of names our element. And I want to put, this is kind of where I'm going to put my envelope together. So I write that. And then inside my envelope, I'm going to create a, a div, an element for every single piece of the of this project so that um, I can piece those pieces together however I want in CSS. So I'm just going to type this up. So I have my back of my envelope, I have the front of my envelope, I have the top of my envelope, and I have the letter I want to send. And then I have my I have my button, so I'm write a button here. So uh, last workshop, I taught you all sorts of different HTML tags, which is important when you're building like a, a, a website to show you show users data and information. But when you're using a website to create art, it's better just to have a div. Uh, with IDs because there's no special tag for the top of an envelope. That's something we're making up. All right, and just to show you that what we did is there, we can put back here, we can put inside here text. Just to show that we have a, we have this something here like click here. Okay, so you can see here, there's my elements. I see them, they're not too interesting. I see them on my phone. We're good. All right. Everything good? All is good. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is learn some SVG. So we can make this word, we can remove this word back and actually replace it with something that looks like this. Okay. All right. So, you know, for SVG, it might be best for just the copy this first um, first one because it's it's more of a boilerplate code um, and there's a lot of code on the web for all sorts of different shapes that you can just copy and paste and then make your own and I'll walk you through what these different pieces are um, so I'm going to delete my comments here uh, that was just to let you know what these are doing this is just telling the browser that we're using a, uh, the year 2000 definition of SVG. Um, and some browsers require it, delete the notes there. This is just telling us that the, the width and the height of our shape is gonna be 300 by 300 pixels. So that was the, this, this, this is our coordinate system space we're working with. So I'm gonna kind of, that's all, everything that goes into that start tag. These things are called attributes. So we have four attributes here. And then we have our polygon, which we have a points attribute and some attributes about its style. So if I delete all that, if you delete all the comments, you'll see it work. And you can see now I have a purple rectangle. So how is this purple rectangle created? Well, here's that first point. X is zero, Y is 100. So that's this point, right? The upper left-hand corner of that point. I guess you're not seeing my notes. So let me show you that. So zero, 100 is here, zero, 100. Space, to tell the browser I'm entering a second point, 300, 100. So I'm going clockwise, 300, 100, 300, 300 and then 0, 300. And the browser is smart enough to know to connect the fourth point with the first point. So you don't have to worry about that. So in SVG, there's actually a, a, an easier way to create a rectangle. There's actually a rectangle element you can use. But I really want you guys to get familiar with the polygon uh, because it's more powerful uh, and we need it for our next shape. But here you can change, start changing the fill color. So let's say I wanted a different fill color than this. Well, you can, if you know the color codes, then you can just type that in, but I don't know the color codes. I'm gonna go here to inspect element. 
And the browser opens up this page for me that kind of shows me what's going on. And this is a great tool, this dev tools it's called, where I can do some little experiments and things. And today I'm gonna to do this experiment with the color. So down here, you should see like this circle here. If you're using Firefox, I think it's a square and Chrome, you can click it. And you can, it comes up with a color picker. So you can choose your own color. So say I wanted it to be a little more blue. I say, I like that color. You can then go over here, copy that code, replace it here. If I close that, then it will be blue. So I'll show you that again uh, as we pick more colors for different things. So uh, if you didn't get it that time, I'll show you next time. All right, so we have our first shape. So now I'm gonna do our second shape. So I'm just gonna copy this because it's a good template for drawing our polygons. Paste it here. And as you see, I'm trying to make my code what's called pretty. Uh, I'm trying to get rid of unnecessary space. If something is inside another element, I'm trying to make sure it's indented. So if you kind of don't things have indented right, you can select all the lines of code and you can hit shift tab or tab to move things around. So shift tab and tab. Uh, if, uh, and I can show you that again too if you need me to, but you'll see me do that. All right, so our next goal is to describe our front, which has a fifth point. So if I go to the front, it has this fifth point. Everything else is the same, but I have this fifth point. So, well, it's actually the second point. So I'm gonna add a new point after zero 100. It's 150 minus 200 space. And voila, I have another point. And you guys can have fun with this. If you wanna add more points, you can add like zero comma uh, zero here. And you can see some funky behavior. Um, so you can define any shape you want uh, that's a polygon shape just by listing these points. You can also do curves in uh, SVG and the math behind that's a little more complicated than just points. So, but just be, be aware you can actually define any, any 2D shape you'd like. It doesn't have to be polygons. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna change my front of my envelope to be lighter blue. So I'm gonna go inspect, again, click here, and I'm gonna pick a lighter blue shade. That one looks nice. I'm happy with that, okay. Then there's these other things, the stroke and stroke width. So stroke is just the term for the outline, the border of the shape. So you can actually add another color for that. So let's say I wanted that dark color for the stroke. I can replace none with that dark color and give it a width, like maybe three pixels. Okay, it's saving. All right, did I just mess something up? Stroke with three pixels. Why is it dark blue? Oh, oh I, I, I didn't save my light blue from, from here. I just did it in, in, in Chrome or in, in the dev tools. So let me go back, get this here, make it light blue. I'm gonna make it like that color blue. Copy that. And paste. All right. So now, now it should remember it. But now you see I have a nice dark blue here and I have a border around my, um, my envelope. All right, I'll stop here. Any questions? Maybe I'll give you some time to uh, work on the colors while I ask questions. What's the difference between tag name, some words? Oh, okay, that's a great question, Xiaoming. Um, so you can see here, polygon. Polygon here has, doesn't have a, I could have wrote it like this uh, and added an in tag for polygon. Uh, so I could have wrote it like this, I, sh I should say. 
So the question is, what's the difference between doing it this way and this way? Well, in um, normal HTML, when you're outside the SVG, you need to always have, except in a very few cases, you always need to have a start tag and an end tag. You always need to have this and this, um, about 90% of the cases. However, in SVG, you have a choice. If there's, if this polygon has no children, like we don't have any anything inside our polygon, then we can just write it as shorthand with a slash here. So we don't have to write that in tag. It's really just a shorthand, that's all. Okay, cool. And um, the, um, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of minutes to just pick on your colors. Um, so maybe 443, we'll get started again. And just ask questions if you have them. I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna work on my colors too. I wanna do a different stroke color. What do I make it? Uh, purple, I like that purple. Maybe a little lighter purple. Uh, yes, that's exactly right, Chow Ming. And you'll see that later today, uh, later in the class. So we're actually going to put some children in our uh, polygon to animate it. All right, I like that color better. It's up to you, Jamming. You can uh, use the inspector or uh, change the code. You can also Google Color Picker and use it to uh, and use a Google Color Picker to find the co color you like. Yeah, 30 more seconds to play with your colors, then we'll move to the next shape. All right, thanks, Yasser. All right, so moving on, we're just gonna do our triangles now. Same thing, we're copying our code, uh, putting it in between the top, and now we just have three points because a triangle is just three points. So we can look at our notes. I'm gonna start with just the closed three points, and then when we do the animation, we'll do the open. So let's just do the closed. So I'm just gonna do this clockwise again. So that's 0, 100, 300, 100, and then this is the third point. So it's actually just rearranging these three points, I think. Uh, 150, 200, yeah. So I go to 0, 100, 300, 100, down to 150, 200. And voila, there's my um, triangle. All right, now it looks like a bikini or something until we piece it together. Um, <laughs> All right, next, uh, let's get our, put, let's put together our letter now. And, you know, my letter's gonna say like, I'm gonna put like a message and use the H1 element to make my text somewhat big. And I'm gonna say, uh, to my friend, uh, I'm gonna put a little image in here. Uh, I think I have from my notes, some image I like to use. Uh, you guys, I can show you what to do with the image, how to find your own images, and then H2 from, from me or from yours truly. Okay. And now I have my little uh, image here, but it's broken because I guess I haven't copied over that happy birthday, Jeff. So I'm going to find a new one. Okay. 
All right, so I'm opening a new tab here. I'm just gonna do an image search for a happy birthday, Jeff. Okay, so there's lots of stuff on the internet you can use. You can go over to the image tab. Oh, I, I wanna dance on the cupcake. Okay, oh, he's not dancing though. Um, maybe a cat one, Let's see. Okay, I like that one. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna, I wanna grab this image. So I'm gonna download this image. So save image ads. I'm gonna click that. Might have something different in Chrome, might be like download image or something else, but it should be there. I'm gonna put it in my downloads. Okay. And I'm gonna go back here to my folder, magic envelope folder, and I'm gonna create a new, I'm gonna do a file upload. I'm gonna add that to that image to my coding space. So let's go to the downloads. I'm gonna rename it, call it happy B day GIF. Rename it, put it in there, it uploads. Uh, so it's there. You can see it working. There's my GIF. And then, all right. So now I just have to hit a space or something to refresh here. All right, there's my GIF. All right, so um, I'm gonna give you guys maybe another three minutes to find an image and let me know if you have any issues. Just find a fun, cute little image you like to use. Find cute minions, yes, minions, yes. That would be good. Get some bananas in there too or something. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of cute stuff here. All right. Um, does anyone need any more time finding their pictures or any issues? Nope, all good. All right. All right, so let's get started again. All right, um, so now we have our HTML all done. And if I go to my um, notes, we're basically done with the HTML piece. We've got all the pieces there. We're all ready now just to glue them together. All right. So I think I described last workshop and I'll just bring it up again is the way that I'm teaching you guys how to program is how to build things from scratch. And it's important when you build things from scratch to start out with HTML because that gives you the things that you want to uh, manipulate with CSS and JavaScript. Um, and then CSS, we'll start with CSS next so that we have something that looks good. And when we look at CSS, we always start with the outermost thing we want to style. So I start with the body, right? And then I would go and style the div. And then I would style the things inside the div. And then I would style things inside of that div. So working from the outside, from the most general thing to the most specific thing. 
So that's how we're going to style. It's much like how an artist works. They first make an outline, kind of what the pieces they want. They pencil things in, and then they fill in the fill in, basically color in, in between the lines, basically, and and then they add maybe some special effects, and they kind of get more and more of the details they liked. So we're we're it's the same type of thing. Okay, so just you just kind of have to have that. Um, process in mind when you're doing it because when you do a project like this it's very it could be very overwhelming you don't know where to start you don't know uh you know you don't know how to tackle it so i'm trying to teach you guys how to tackle this type of problem and not just having to go to a stack overflow or a code pin and copy and paste and try to hack what other people did all right so i'm going to start by styling that body element so here i'm going to create a style element and uh, that will allow me to add my CSS. And I'm going to select the body. Okay. Um, put my notes back over there. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is this white space here. Uh, we're going to get rid of that white space because we want to have full control over our canvas. And we, it's annoying sometimes to have that white space because it's like, you might be asking yourself, why is that white space there? So it's always good to get rid of it. Uh, so now things are just right against the edge. So now we can position things relative to this upper hand corner, this, this edge here, the zero, zero. We're going to position everything relative to this corner, actually all four corners, this corner, this corner, and this corner. So position relative will allow us to move any of these elements inside of this relative to basically the sides of the body. And you'll see what that means shortly. Uh, misspelled position. All right. Uh, then width, I'm gonna make my width this of my body the same width of the page. The height, the same as the height of the page. Um, and then I wanna add a cool gradient. Now I just said it's not good to copy and paste code uh, when you're creating from something from scratch. Um, I'm gonna prove myself wrong because when you're doing some CSS, like a, like a particular detail, it's better to copy and paste some detail that you'd like to use. Um, it's much like going to the store and if you wanted to buy sprinkles for your cake, it's better to buy the sprinkles for the cake than making those sprinkles from scratch. Um, but you're still making your cake from scratch still. Uh, and no one's gonna say you're not if you're buying sprinkles at the store. All right, so in the notes, I have this cool website. There's so many of these websites, uh, so many creative people out there. And this website is great to go to to find a background gradient you, you like. So I'm gonna pick a different gradient, maybe something more colorful than my last one. So you can just go over here, copy CSS, um, and go in here and paste that. Okay. And there we go. There's my cool gradient. Um, and I can change it around. Maybe I don't like the 90 degrees. Maybe I want it like 45 degrees. And you know, I, now I can kind of hack into this and now I have like a, hmm, I like that a little better. So I think that's pretty good. Um, and I can play with these other numbers, you know, it's good to be curious. Oh, I wonder what that does. You can just like type 80% and then see what effects it has. So it made this purple area brighter. Oh, I don't like that. Maybe I'll put it this 30%. Maybe I want it. I don't want this much purple because it's too bright. Okay, so that pushes it out to the corner more. Um, but you, I'm hoping you get the sense that it's free. To, it's good to play with things once you copy it, customize it for your own. All right, I'll give you guys uh, maybe two minutes to find a good gradient you like, and then uh, we'll continue. And I'll paste this in the chat so that you have that link.
All right. Okay. I hope that's enough time for you guys. Uh, let me know if you need more time. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, sir. All right. Um, all right. So our next thing we want to style is this envelope. So we want to define a space where we're going to piece everything together, kind of like a container uh, that we're going to move everything into. So to do that, I'm just going to write hashtag envelope. Up this, to this point, I didn't have anything in front of body because this is just selecting the tag. But since I have lots of divs, I can't select divs. So I'm going to do hashtag envelope, just like Twitter, hashtag hashtags to tag something. And now I'm going to style this. So I'm going to put a, like a background orange, color orange, just so you can see what is going on. What would the cat, if I put div here, Zhao Ming, it would, um, it would style all these divs the same way. So I, I only want to style this, this div right here. I only want to define that space where I want to put things. So right now this div is basically the same size as my body and I don't want that. I only want my envelope to be right in the middle of the page kind of thing. So I'm going to do that next um, using positioning now. So I'm going to do position. Uh, if I spell position right, absolute. And this will allow me now to position things relative to the sides of my body. So first of all, for example, I can put a top of like uh, 100, like 200 pixels. And you should see everything got shifted 200 pixels. So this is relative from the top of the body. And I can do like left 300 pixels here. And then it'd be everything relative from the left to get pushed over. Now what I really want to do is put it right in the middle. So I'm going to use the, this calc function. So you can actually have the browser do math for you in CSS. You can write calc here. Well, I know the width of my, this is top. So I know the height of my body is 100 VH. So I'm just going to type in 100 VH here. Um, and what I really want is to be in the middle. So I'm going to do 50 VH. Actually, let me show you with this alpha calc first. Let me just start with calc and show you why we need a calc. I jumped ahead. So with 50 VH, it pushed the whole entire envelope down. Uh, to, to, so the top of the orange section is in the middle. Well, what I want is I want my envelope to be a width and a height of 300 pixels. So let me put that in so you can see that it's restricted. All right, now I have my envelope here. And what I want to do is move it up so that the middle of the, of this is in the middle of the page. So I just need to move it up half of the, of the height. So that's what I was trying to get at. So I can do calc here and 50 VH. And then I'm going to subtract to move it up 150 pixels so that it's right in the middle. So now my envelope's right here vertically in the middle. And the left, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make it 50 VW minus 100 VH, and that should be right in the middle. Okay. All right. So now I have this nice orange spot space that is right there. Okay. Um, so I'll explain it again. Okay. So let me uh, remove these two lines right now. Let me just kind of delete this again. Let me just get our envelope 300 pixels by 300 pixels. Okay. VW is short for view width, and that's the distance from here to here. So different screens have different widths, so we can't use pixels. Okay. 
And VUH is the distance from the top to the bottom. So everyone's uh, screens are different, so everyone's going to have a different pixel size. And this allows us to build something relative to the size of your screen. Okay. So I want to move this orange box down to the middle. So that's where I was using that calc function. So if I do top, and if I wanted it to be the top of this right in the middle, I would put 50 VH to move the top of it right in the middle. So now it's right in the middle, 50% here and 50% down there. But what I want to do is have the middle of my shape to be in the middle. So the middle of my shape, this is 300 pixels high. So the middle is 150 pixels. So what I want to do is move everything up 150 pixels so that the middle of my box is there. So I write calc minus 150 pixels. And now it's in the middle. So I hope that makes sense if you didn't get it. Uh, we'll do it again uh, for the button. Um, and I'll explain it again then. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing with the left. And then it should go right in the middle. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you can. That's the one. The beautiful thing about the calc function is you can just subtract things from different units. I know your high school science teacher would never let you do that, but you can do that in CSS. Um, our next job is I want to like style all my divs, everything, all my, all the things that, all my shapes inside my envelope at once um, so that I don't have to copy and paste a lot of things. So I'm going to show you that. So if I want to style everything inside of here, I can write envelope greater than star, star selects everything, greater than is the things inside of something else. So if I wanted to hide everything, I can put display none here. And that will hide all my, all my shapes. So that, that way I can just see my envelope. Yes, exactly, Geomi. It's 50 VW regardless of the device. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is once we style our shapes, um, I'm going to want to position them, position them absolute to my envelope. So if I remove the display none now, you can see now all my shapes are all, all on top of each other. And so now we've successfully taken all our shapes and whoop, put them together like a deck of cards. Um, so now we can start moving things relative to this orange box. So um, I'm going to do this display none again. So we don't see all the shapes. And then I'm going to bring each shape into view one by one. So let's start. Now we're into this level of our CSS. Let's start with the back. So I'm going to do hashtag back. And I'm going to bring that into view. I'm going to display block so you can see that. Okay. All right. All right. So the thing is, this is the back. So I want to make sure the shape, all the other shapes go on top of this one. Um, so this, this is bringing the concept of layering. And to layer something in CSS, you just use the Z index property. So zero would be the bottom most layer. Um, so this might not make sense until we put more things on top of it. So just bear with me on this. Um, then I'm going to do hashtag front and I'm going to display block there and I'm going to give it a Z index of 10. And the reason I gave it 10 is so that I can put the letter in between 
the front and the back. So later on when we do the letter, it will have a Z index of like five or something. Um, so now you can see the front is right on top of the back. If I changed uh, this to a 10 and this to a zero, then you would see the back on top of the front. Uh, and you wouldn't even see the front because the back completely covers it. So you can just change the layering just by changing this to the index. Okay. So our next shape was the top. Let's bring in that top. You can do zero and one. It's just then you can't do 0 0.5. So you, you want to be able to put that letter in between uh, zero and so we picked a number that allows us to put things inside of it. So you'll see that soon when we put the letter in. Display block the top. I'm going to do a Z index of 11. I don't want to put anything in between the front and the top. That's kind of weird. So I'll just do a one difference there. And there's my, my top. Oh, I never changed the color of my top. Oh, well. OK. Um, then let's do that letter. Let's put that letter in between there. So my next job is to do the letter. Uh, display block so you can see it. All right, so there's our my letter. And I'm going to do a Z index of 20 right now so that I can see my letter. So nothing's in front of it. So I'll just give it a higher number. I just pick 20. You can pick 50. You can pick 1,000. You can pick 12. Um, but this way, I can see my letter while I style it. And then I'm going to change the Z index to be a number between 0 and 10 so it's hidden. OK. So let's style our letter. Um, the first thing is I'm going to um, do this display flex like we did last class so that I can put things in my letter nicely without having to do much, much thinking. So first thing is I want to put uh, everything in a column like it was before. So I just do flex direction column. Um, I'm going to uh, align everything in the middle. So the line, whoops, center, no, line items, all the items, I'm going to put them in the center. So now it should be um, there. Okay. Um, then I'm going to give it a, you can't really see it in the center because that doesn't have a width. So I'm going to give it a width of, what do I do in the notes? Oh, I don't, I'm not using width. Okay, I'll get into that next. Um, I want to now uh, justify the contents as well so that everything's kind of spaced evenly. Uh, contents, uh, space around. Right, justify content. No, content. It's not content. Sorry. So right now, you can't really see the effect because I haven't sized it. Uh, but uh, this will ensure that as we animate the letter, things stay proportional to everything else. Otherwise, as we animate the letter, everything's going to be kind of crumpled up to the upper left-hand corner. And later on, I can show you that when we, when we finish the project. Um, now I'm going to make sure everything fits inside the envelope. So I'm going to use this top. So this again from the top of the orange of uh, 105 pixels. So now it's 105 pixels down from the top. Okay. And then I'm going to do a left of five pixels. I think that's what I did. Yep. So now it's five pixels from the edge. So it doesn't stick out of the envelope. And this is going to be kind of weird to you, but I'm going to do a um, I guess I did 15 pixels in the note, so I'll keep it 15 pixels. Um, and I'm going to do a right of 15 pixels. So you can't see what happened, but here, let me um, put a background color next. Where's my background color? Oh, there it is down there. Okay. 
trying to keep it the same as the notes. So I put a background color of white so you can actually see what I just did. So you can see now my card, it's 15 pixels from the right and 15 pixels from the left. So if I deleted the right, you see how now it's just kind of, it didn't stretch over to the width that I want. So I can just use these coordinates to actually define a width and a height without saying width and height. I can just do everything relative to the edge of the box. And same thing with the bottom. I can go to the bottom here and do, what is it, bottom I picked five pixels, okay. All right, and then the white box should appear up here. There we go. So now my letter fits inside of the envelope. Um, <clears throat> and another thing is it's a good idea to put this overflow hidden because sometimes you, if you have a too big of an image, it might stretch it out. Um, this will prevent anything from stretching outside of the white box. Um, and I don't even need that padding I have, so I'm going to leave that out. I'm going to change the font size. Um, 16 pixels. Okay. This just changes the font size, but since we used H1 in our letter, you, H1 actually has a default font size. So here we can just do letter H1 and just say, I want to use this font size, not the default font size. So what you can do here is font size inherit, basically inherit from the parent. And same thing for the H2. So I can go here, H2. And now my font size should always be 16 pixels. Okay. Um, and then the last thing is it's a letter. It's nice to have a little box shadow. So I uh, have a link in the, again, in the uh, notes that you can go to create some cool box shadows. Um, So what that does is it adds a nice shadow on the edge. I don't know if you really see it, uh, but it's there. Um, so here I can show you this site here. It has really cool box si shadow uh, presets because it's getting just a lot of magic numbers that it's hard to very hard to get right. So uh, you can make your letter look like a Minecraft block or you can make your letter look like it's floating really high in space. So you can do a lot of cool different things with uh, background. I mean, with box shadow. Um, okay. So I'll put that in the uh, presets and I'll send that out. To oh, thank you, Gia. All right. Uh, finally, we need to put our um, letter in, in our envelope. So that means we need to pick a Z index between zero and 10. So I'm gonna pick five. So, bam, you can't see it anymore, but you know what? If I change my top Z index to one, you will see your letter kind of peeking through. See? So just by changing 11 to one, I put my top behind my letter. You can see the letter there. So you can see it's in there. Let's just change it back to 11. And then later on when we animate it, we will make it appear. All right. Um, oh, the last thing is, I, I forgot, I should have done this before, is the image. I forgot to size the image. So the image, I want it to be at least the 50% 50, 50 of the height of the letter. So if I make this 50 again, you'll see what that does. So you can see what the letter looks like. So now I'm just making sure that the height of this image is one half the height of the letter. Okay, and then finally the button, um, just for sake of uh, time, I'm just gonna copy the button text and review with you what's going on. So the button, I want it to be at a, uh, 
15 Z index so you can see it on top of the envelope. I want to see it. And then the cool thing with this is you can add this border radius of 50%. And if the width and the height are the same, it will make a nice circle of you know 50 pixels in diameter. I um, got rid of my border, click the color gold, you know, here I just making this bold text, put it in the middle, the text in the middle, color is white. Also, when you hover over it, it makes, gives you a nice little hand. That's this cursor thing. And again, I want it to write in the middle. So I'm using this calc function. So the height here is 200 pixels. And the height, the diam the radius of the circle is 25 pixels. So I want it to center right in the middle. So I have to subtract that 25 to bring that button up. Um, so that's just a rehash of what we did with the envelope. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a, maybe a couple minutes to style things, play with the uh, Z index, play with, play with the code a little bit and answer any questions you might have. And I also would love to see what anyone has created so far. Um, if you get, can one of you, if you can, just send me a link to your site. I would love to see um, what you have going. Thank you, Guillet. See, oh, nice. Okay. All right. Um, this is Guillet's. All right. Cool. Okay. And if you're getting any errors, CSS is very particular about these semicolons, so make sure you have semicolons. Where do we put the box shadow code? Oh, oh that was for the letter. That's right here. Okay, let me see yours. Um, Mine is no magic envelope dot HTML. Let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, sir, I don't see the, okay. Oh, you don't have a name to it? How is that possible? Do you not have like a dot HTML or something afterwards? E is missing. Oh, okay. Okay. So you, you just need a dot HTML here then. I still don't see it. Uh, do you, you you'll need a dot HTML? Do you have like a Oh, it has index.html. Okay. Oh, I see. So you, you, you have it like this. Okay, gotcha. Nope. All right. Um, maybe not that. Nope. You might just need to copy. If you can go to your browser and just copy the full path, I can get it then, Yasser, from you. I'm still sharing. I am, right? Oh, I see. E is missing. That's, that's, okay, that's it. Okay, I got you now. Okay, cool. Thank you, Yasser. So, looks like you're having troubles with the CSS on the 
rectangle, or, is, or are you just playing with it? You just might need to, let me see what you got here. Let me go edit this. Oh, oh, yeah, sir. I see the problem. Yeah, see, this is very particular. You need to add spaces around these minus signs like that. I don't know if you saw that, yeah, sir, but that's what you need to put spaces around the minus signs. Yeah. So, you got it? Okay, cool. All right. Uh, Lucy's one is beautiful. Where's Lucy's link? I want to see Lucy's link. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. All right, let's see what you got. Oh, nice. I like the colors. You're way better with the colors than I am, Lucy. And you have a nice box shadow around it. That's so sweet. All right. So now let's um, continue, if you don't mind, unless you guys have any last minute questions. Um, all right, so I guess the next thing I'd like to do actually is um, make the, get rid of the orange box. We don't need that anymore. We were just using that as a guideline, kind of like an artist with the paint, with the, the, um, with the pencil. We're going to erase our pencil marks now. So we're going to delete that orange background because we don't need that anymore. So, all right, there we go. Now we just have an envelope. All right, so our next step here now is to add some JavaScript. Let's see, where's my, here we go. We created shapes, we add CSS. All right, so we're not gonna see the effect of this code until later on, but uh, let's just do it now. We're just gonna create um, a function that doesn't do anything right now, but we're just gonna create a placeholder. And then we're going to add this attribute inside of the button element so that when you click it, the button, it will call that function. Okay. So let's just start here under the style. Let's put script. You don't need to put the script module this time. Um, and just type function, uh, open me, whatever you, you don't, don't put open because open is a, uh, is a, um, is a restricted function in JavaScript and it will break your code. So put something other than open. I'll put open me. And inside the button attribute here, just like where we wrote ID and stuff and source, we're gonna write on click. And we can do this on any button. It doesn't have to be a, any element. It doesn't have to be a button. And then what we're gonna do is when you click it, you're gonna call open me. So basically when you click it, it evaluates what's in between the string. Okay. All right, that's it for the JavaScript for right now. Now we have kind of like our, our, our HTML all done, uh, some basic CSS done, and now we're ready for that, uh, those animations. Okay. Okay, the first animation we're gonna do is on, on hover animation. So, uh, do I still have that? No, I don't have that page open. Okay. So when we hover open it, hover over this button, we wanna change the CSS style. So we can here, we can add envelope, the button inside the envelope, and we can put colon hover. So this is just again, another magic string you just get, get familiar with, curly braces. And 
this, whatever we write here, will override whatever we wrote here when we hover over it. So one thing I've done is I make the background color pink when I hover over it. Pink. Well, just to show you this, when I hover over it, the color turns pink. It doesn't animate yet, but it, 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 just, it just instantaneously picks pink. So let's just kind of change the style, what we want, and then we have this, then we can add the nice and animation. So I have background color pink. I want to make it bigger, so I'm going to transform, I'm going to scale it. So I'm going to scale it by 1.5, so I'll make it 50% bigger. And I'm going to make the text color black. I think that's what I have, those three things. And each of these three things we can actually uh, animate or transition, that's what it's called. So right now it's just kind of like jarring. It just goes boom, 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 right? It's too jarring. So let's add that animation. So it's really easy. All we have to do is write a, uh, this is the most simplest animation we can do, transition. And we just describe how we want to transition from these styles to this style. So we want to do, well, we want to transition the transform property for one second, comma. We also want to transition the background color, uh, one second. And we also want to, so I'm just writing these, each of these properties we want to transition. And then the color, I also want to transition for one second. So now after it's done saving, I hover over it. Now it, now I see the color, everything transitions nicely. But when I hover out of it, it goes, it snaps back. It's not, isn't so nice when it snaps back, but at least the size goes good and all that. But let's fix that snaps back. All you have to do is just do the same transition inside of here. So then it will transition uh, the same three things back to their original values. So now if I go like this, hover out, see now it has this nice kind of fluid effect. Okay, and you guys don't have to pick pink 1.5 and color black. You guys can pick your own styles you want to override. Um, I just picked those. Um, you can also do like a rotate uh, 56 degrees, for example, just kind of give you something spicy. And then you can make your button rotate. Whee! So, anyway. And there's so many things you can do with transform. Again, you can go to the notes, go to the uh, go to the link, and you can see there's a whole slew of things you can do. Um, you can rotate in 3D, even um, you can skew things. Um, so you can have a lot of fun with that. All right, give you guys maybe one more minute to play with it. All right, I think we're ready for our next section. Unless anyone has last minute questions? The DA answered that question. All right, perfect. Um, let me get to my notes. All right, so next is what we're gonna do now is explore SVG animation. And what this will allow us to do is when we click the button, we're going to, you see how the top um, opened up? Well, we're, we're going to animate that open up effect now. Okay. And we're going to do that by uh, 
changing the animation of the top. So I think I told you at the beginning with Xiao Ming's question is we're going to use HTML this time to describe the animation instead of CSS. So um, it might be seem weird to use HTML to describe animation, but it, it's there. So the first thing we need to do is change this to this so that we can put in instructions in HTML how to animate. Okay. So again, for sake of time, I'm just going to copy the, 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 in the animate element in the notes. I'll just copy that. And we'll just walk through it, um, what each of these things are. So the first thing is this ID, open top. I have to name this animate element so that in JavaScript, we can find this element and start the animation. Uh, I have to tell it what attribute here to animate. So I'm gonna be animating the points. I'm gonna be changing these points how long the animation, 0.5 seconds, and what to do after the animation is done. So when the animation is done, I want the top to stay at the top. I don't want to do anything different. So I just put field freeze there. And when to start the animation. So indefinite means that it's going to wait indefinitely until some JavaScript starts the animation. So if I wanted to see the animation right away, I can just, I can just kind of like, con cut this out, don't have a begin, and then the animation, you can see the animation happen. And you can see how it freezed. Okay, so I'm going to put that back in. And we're going to use JavaScript so that when you click this button, it will pop up. So to do that, we first have to find this, basically put this element into a JavaScript variable so we can manipulate it. So we're going to create a variable for this thing. I'm just going to copy the ID and use dollar sign ID to represent the variable name. It could be anything you want. And I'm going to use this document.query selector that we saw last class to find the element by its ID. So I'm just going to do this and then hashtag open top, just like hashtag up here in the envelope. I mean, when we're doing the CSS. And then now that variable is in this, uh, has this element inside of it. So it has this begin um, element function that we can call. So the dollar sign represents it's just me uh, adding the dollar sign. You don't need it. All I'm doing is just so that the person reading my code understands that this variable contains an element inside of it. Um, so I'm going to hit click again, and then the animation happens. Yep. So if I, I can delete the dollar signs, um, and I, the same animation will happen. So the animation still happens. So it's up to you if you want to add. All right. Okay, cool. Boom. All right. All right. So we can get really fancy with these animations. We could have the envelope uh, fall down. We can have the envelope dis disappear, which what we're going to do is a very simple animation. But if you, if you Google this type of project, you'll see a lot of creative people out there doing really cool animations. But to keep this class simple, I'm going to do a simple animation and just make the envelope disappear. And then when we get to the challenges, we can talk about more complicated animations that you can try. Um, so that's our next step here is to hide the envelope. So when we click the button, what we're going to do is tag these elements with what's called a class name so that we can use CSS to hide them. Now that's going to be, that's a little confusing, I know. Um, so let me, I think it might be best if I show you uh, how this is going to work. So I'm going to, I'm going to hide the, uh, the button first. Okay. 
So I'm going to up here, keeping all my constants together, I'm going to go find that button. I have my button. And then down here, I'm going to use the button. I'm going to do button and I'm going to tag that element with a class name. So I, there's this way of doing this. It's called a class list dot add. And I'm going to add, I'm going to make up a class name like animate. Again, you can put anything you want here. Okay. So I'll show you what this does. So if I inspect here, Uh, right now, my button just has one attribute, on click open me. Now, if I click it, it added this class name, animate. So it added this, it edited the HTML, basically, so that I can then use CSS to do stuff to it. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you. Um, so now we can go over here. And we can change uh, this. Instead of colon hover, we can use dot animate because I use it as a class name and dot is for class names. But I've tagged my button with animate. And I can then use something called opacity to hide it. So opacity is zero. So now I hit the button, opens up, and my button appear, disappears immediately. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Changing code after a click, yep. So then we can just add a transition, just like we did up here, and transition the opacity this time. And I think, what did I do in my notes? Uh, one second. But if I do this, show you what happens. It, the button will disappear before the envelope uh, opens up or while the envelope opens up. So I think it would be better to hide the envelope after we open up the, open it up. So there's this other property called transition delay that allow, we can delay the animation for one second time for this animation to finish. Or not this animation, the uh, this animate, the open top animation to finish. Um, and then we hide the envelope. So now if I hit this, oh, that didn't work. Uh, why? Transition delay. Let's try that again. I'm missing something. Did I misspell something? All right, uh, trying to see what my error is, guys. Transition delay one second, yeah. Capacity one second, okay. All right, make sure my code was syncing. Yeah, it's there. Okay, I did something wrong, so I don't know what I did. I'm going to see if the browser can tell me what it doesn't like. Um, so I'm going to click here. Yeah, see over here it says uh, it, 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 it's grayed out. That means the browser doesn't like it. Um, what did I do wrong? Uh, it must have overwritten something. I think it overrid something. I think usually when it crosses out, some reason it, some other property is overriding it. So I'm going to put bang important to let it know this is very important and not um, hover over it. Let me try that. Yeah, that time it, um, oh, I see. This, this transition here, I think, hovered over it. I think that was the problem. Okay. So when I hover over it, it has its own transition here. So this one is hovering, is breaking this one. So I need to add, uh, I need to add another style here. So when I hover over this one, when I'm hovering over the button when it's animating, it needs to be 
displayed. Yeah, that now it works. Okay. All right. Sorry, I, didn't, I missed that in my notes. If you're confused by that, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll just get the rest of the envelope working. Just, just know that there is a conf confusion. The browser is confused about what to do between here and here. Um, so now we just need to uh, put all our other variables into the uh, so top, and then this would be hashtag top. Just have to grab all the other properties. So front, hashtag, back, and I think those are the three. So I put a dollar sign for the variable names, hashtag to find them, a back. And then I can just kind of, you can copy and paste the code in the example too, but you can just, so I'll just add animate to all of these. Okay. And I'm just going to add comma delimited. I'm just going to add each one, hashtag top. Comma delimited means that just separate the selectors by the, um, by a comma. So when a hashtag top has it's tagged with animate, do this. And when hashtag back dot animate and hashtag uh, front. Come on. All right. Hope I'm not consuming you guys here. All right. So now all my buttons, I mean, all my uh, shapes now, when they're tagged with animate, it will they slowly disappear. So if I click here now, everything just disappears. Okay. Um, all right. I think maybe the problem is, guys, is transition looked like it didn't work. I think this has to go over this. I think this was overriding this. That's probably what was happening, guys. Yeah, there we go. Now it disappears. That was the issue, guys. The issue was that this transition has a delay built in. So if you put this one before this one, this one will override it. So just make sure this is after this, unlike the notes. Okay. So now I have a letter here, but the letter isn't too, um, too big. So what we want to do finally, I think this is the last step, is to add these keyframes. So that we want, as the envelope, when the envelope is done opening up, we want the letter to pop out of the envelope as it disappears and then get bigger after the envelope disappears. So there's two stages there. There's this popping up stage and then there's this getting bigger stage. All right, so what we need to do is the same thing we did with these other shapes. We need to add the letter here. Let's just do the, what we know you need to do. Change this add letter here. So that we can, con we can control this with JavaScript. Okay. And here we can then style our uh, hashtag letter uh, when it's tagged with anime. Okay. But this time, we are going to need to define an anime, a special animation. We're going to have to define those stages I was talking about. We do that with this keyframes uh, instructor here. So you write this dollar signs keyframes. It's kind of like defining variables in, in CSS. Um, so we're creating this keyframes variable. I'm going to call it make big. You can call it whatever you want. It's just a, it's just a variable kind of thing. Put curly braces here to define what this means. So the first thing is we have three stages. So I'm going to say at 0%, at the very first stage, when the animation starts, I'm going to pick something simple right now. I'm just going to change the top and change that to 16 pixels. Then I'm going to wait uh, maybe one third of the time. After one third of the time, I want the top to grow to, what do I have in the notes? 
Oh, I'm sorry. This was 105 pixels. Don't know what I was looking at. This is a negative 100 pixels. Uh, so this is going to be 100 pixels above that orange box we had. So we're going to extend it beyond the envelope element. So, so we're going to start at 105 pixels below. And then the top is going to increase up to 100 pixels above the orange box that was there. So it's going to be like way up here. And at 100%, so when the animation's done, the top we want to be at, let's say for this example, 50 pixels. So you, just so you can see it. Okay. And then in here, we can uh, add a delay again. Well, first of all, let's just define our animation. Uh, so instead of using transition, we're going to define animation now. And basically, we want to say use animation defined by make big, uh, make it last for two seconds. And forwards is the same thing that like was fixed down here, freeze down here, which means keep everything where it is when the animation's over. And I'm going to make an animation um, delay of two seconds. All right, so hopefully you can see this happen. In one, one third of two seconds, it will grow from, top will go from 105 pixels from that to a negative 100 pixels. And then it will shrink back down to 50 pixels. So let's see what happens. Boop, boop. So you see how it kind of went boop, boop. Um, and if I refresh, so I can add, I can add a, uh, another stage here, right? I can add like at 75% or maybe yeah, 75%, I can have the top go to a negative. Uh, I can have it go to negative, no, let's go up to 100. Okay, so this time you can see it go pop up, it kind of bounce up and down. So if I do this, it will go up, go back down and go back up. So you can make, just by adding different stages, you can add more stop points of your animation. So to do our animation right, it took Guillain and I a, a long, a lot of experimentation on all these different variables. So I'm just gonna copy and paste them from the notes. And just through experimentation by changing these numbers, we were able to get kind of the animation effect we want. So it, it does definitely work to do animation, but it's an art. So it takes time and takes precision and takes a good eye. Um, so when you're done, click that, spares, goes up, goes down, voila. And then on my phone, if I refresh it, again, we wanna check this on the phone. So here's my uh, envelope, click it and yeah, everything looks pretty nice on the phone. So now I could uh, send my uh, my friend uh, a birthday greeting, and by just by you know taking the URL, copying it, and you know sending it on my favorite chat app. Um. So that is the uh, that's basically the project. I'll give you guys maybe two minutes to play with it, ask questions, and then we'll talk about the uh, challenges. Yes, CSS animation, you can also uh, do character animations. Yeah, frame by frame. Everything in stages, yep. And I actually taught a class where we did just that, where we were doing CSS animations to make characters fight and uh, dance and jump off cliffs. Some of the kids were pretty, um, uh, pretty, pretty creative with what they did. <laughs> but yeah, thanks you for bringing that up. That's that's one use case of CSS animation. And you can do the same thing with SVG animation too. Uh, the benefit of SVG animation, just to let you know, is it's more complicated, but you can animate the curves. So if you wanted like a billowing cloud kind of animation, like or like bubbles kind of like growing and like changing, morphing in different shapes, that's CSVG animations will allow you to make that. 
uh, CSS animations is more fixed to certain geometries. Um, so if you want to see an SVG animation here, we can just add more numbers here. We can just have fun with the, these numbers here. I can put 30, put 400 here, and maybe add a fourth point, like, I don't know, 700 comma 700. I uh, actually have to stay within the 300. 300, and maybe I'll put like 200 comma 200, something like this. I'm just putting some random points here so you can see how the top kind of deforms. So you can see how it deformed into a different shape. Um, so it allows you to form things. But you also can do stages in, in SVG animation. So you can have like those balloon clouds and things. Back to my code. So just, just have fun experimenting with it, guys. All right. All right, I guess it's the last 10 minutes. Um, if there are not any questions, let me jump into the challenge and um, get you guys started on creating stuff. So um, let's find my challenge page. Okay, so if you want to submit your challenge, you just go to your coding space, go to Goom of the Week. Uh, again, if you don't see Goom of the Week, go to settings. Go here to participate. Um, and here, you're ready to submit the challenge. So what you can do here to learn about the challenge, you can click this challenge link. And there's also a link on the other link that we gave you earlier. Um, so I guess, first of all, I should mentor, talk about the mentoring session. So Saturday, uh, he and I are open for mentoring time. So if there's some cool effect you want to try, you don't have the confidence or you're curious about something, or you just want to show off what you've done, uh, feel free to uh, sign up and we'll give you guys 10 minutes of our time to really uh, get you guys doing something creative. Deadline for submission is right here next week, the 13th at 4 p.m. Pacific uh, Daylight's time. Uh, and we, again, we have two challenges. One is the free challenge where uh, we're just giving away um, uh, our time. Um, also, you know, we're giving away uh, extra coding space time uh, for you guys with a custom URL so that you can use your Goom space, but uh, not with like IC Tomato 46, but to something you want. So you can actually start uh, branding yourself on our system. And the requirement is to make your own version of the web card. So play with the animations, change the images, change the theme, uh, just have fun with it. Um, and we'll have a winner, whoever has the best, um, most creative and best beginner project. So if you're a beginner, this is, this is meant to help you uh, do your homework, do get, get that confidence you need to become a good developer. So we want to reward you for that. So please, please submit your uh, project. Uh, then the pay to play one, $10, uh, $50 gift card. So this money just goes into paying for the prizes really. Uh, $20 gift card for uh, runner up. So if you wanna, if you think you can win this thing, uh, uh, we don't have that many submissions. So if you want some free money, if you want to turn your $10 into $50. And if you're the only one submitted, then you basically turn your $10 to $50 if you did something worth our time looking at. Um, and the requirement of this is to make the envelope close and the letter goes back to the envelope. So that means when you're done, there's no way to like reset this. So we'd like you to try to put a button somewhere you click on the button and then have an animation that kind of rewinds everything back into uh, the envelope in a creative way. And again, if you don't know how to do that, if you want to get started, just sign up some time on the Q&A session this Saturday and we can get you started on that uh, so that you can submit that and maybe turn your $10 into $50 or $10 into $20. Um, so, and how to submit the challenge? There's a video here you can watch. I'll just show you. Um, in the 
Um, in your coding space, there's a submit button. Okay. So what you'll do is you'll go here and you would enter your name. If you worked with people on it, you enter their names so we can recognize them as well. And then you choose your tier. So if you choose 10 bucks, you can just pay here um, or you just submit. But before you submit, you need to publish a project first. So to do that, you go to all files. So let's say I was done with my mod magic envelope. I would go here to publish. And I would give it a name like magic envelope. Give the give it give the HTML page that I want to look at. Uh, uh, happy birthday or something. Whatever you want to write there. And if you want to push it to GitHub, you can do that. I can, I can tell you how to do that later during the Q&A session. But if you want a screenshot, add us a screenshot. You can also just put the, whatever you want, the GIF there. And then you hit the Publish button. And it should publish it. OK. And then you can always go back to Publish and change things uh, if you want. So just republish if you need to. Uh, and then if you go to your settings, and you go to your profile page, you should see magic envelope there with a the view, and then you can see your see your thing there. Uh, that's how we're going to see it. Um, and then if you go to Boom of the Week, and you go to Submit, here it is, magic envelope. Now I can go in and just submit it. So yay, I submitted it. So, and then you click this link and you go back. Okay. And then when you're done submitting it, you'll have a link here that you can look at. And again, if you need to republish it, you don't need to resubmit it. You can just republish your work and we'll see the latest version of it. So it's okay if you make an error and you want to fix it, you can always fix it. Okay. All right. So yeah, we ended pretty much right on time. So I think that went really well, guys. I hope I didn't move too fast for you guys. Hope I gave you enough time to play with it. Uh, I'd like to hear, I have three minutes left. I would love to hear some feedback from you guys. You guys were so quiet. Um, any feedback? <laughs> One last question. How do you fix the problem for why the GIF doesn't show up? Where do the GIF does not show up? On the on here, or it didn't show up on your um, page here. On the letter, okay. Um, can you share your screen? Oh, show show me your link. Link, Lucy, I have your link, right? All right, let me look at your code really quick. Um, and see what what happened. So here's your letter, bdayminions.gif. So let me see here. OK. Um, I'm guessing maybe the, it's in a different file path. So I'm thinking the you might have put it in a different folder. So I'm going to go back to my uh, all files here. If you do you see the GIF here working, uh, Lucy? Okay. Can you repeat the first part of opening the envelope? Oh, you mean when the uh, envelope pops open? Yes. Okay. So Lucy, once you check that, uh, let me, if you do see the GIF here, just click on the image and just say copy image location and paste that uh, in your source here. So that will give you a big long URL, but um, you can do that. Um, try that again. So I go here, copy image location. And then you see, then you see the whole path to it. So I'm hoping that will fix your issue, Lucy. 
Um, the first part of opening the envelope. Okay, so, so when I click the button, I find this element open top, which is this ID here, this animate thing. And what I do is I call this method begin element, which will then begin the animation. And then the animation, all it's gonna do is transform my shape from the one of a triangle pointing down to a shape of a triangle pointing up. Hope that makes sense, yeah, sir. Okay. All right, it's six o'clock. Um, you're free to go if you wanna go. Lucy, I wanna see if you have your GIF working. And I really, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing your animated web card as well. So uh, take care guys and please sign up for the time on Saturday if you, if you need it. <laughs>